Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and this evening we have a look at the latest from the National Hurricane Centre as it looks like the hurricane season is finally firing up as we do have some storms potentially brewing out in the Atlantic. We've had a very quiet start to the um, hurricane season so far which is quite fortunate especially as it was quite bad last um uh, last sort of summer into autumn with a sort of record um, number of storms named. We did suspect this would be an above average season, but luckily and fortunately it hasn't come off like that so far and the Atlantic has been pretty quiet, but things are starting to take off. Now do remember if you enjoy my videos, make sure you do like and subscribe and do remember to follow me on Twitter as well. Links in the description. Now we'll briefly do an update on the National Hurricane Centre now and I'll be doing another update on the UK forecast um, shortly after this video. So I'll link that up in the top right if I've posted that by the time you see this video. So do check that out. So if we do start in the Atlantic, there are some systems in the Central Pacific and Eastern Pacific, but it's really the Atlantic, which is the one we have to watch as it's hitting it's going to probably, uh, well, any storms that form in the Atlantic have a higher chance of hitting um, well-populated areas. And also, when they sort of head northwards, they could come in, into the jet stream, and that's where they could start impacting the UK. So it's something we need to look at 10 to 14 days' time. So at the moment, we have two disturbances out in the Atlantic. They're very close together. We have disturbance one, which has a 40% chance of cyclone formation 40 48 hours, and, cyclone, and disturbance two, which is chance of cyclone formation in 40 hours, is only 30%. Now, I would say these percentage chances it, it gives are pretty inaccurate. Um, they It's very difficult to forecast chances of storm forming. Last year, I do remember, we had a 10% chance of formation and the next day it had formed into a storm. So they are a little bit off sometimes. I wouldn't I wouldn't always um, take them as literal, but there is a decent chance we do see at least one storm form from these areas of low pressure. Now, disturbance one, if we do have a look at the five-day uh, graphical um, uh, graphic, we can see these the track of these storms um, that may be forming. So if we have a look at disturbance one, um, it's an elongated area of low pressure located several hundred miles east of the Windward Islands, and it continues to produce disorganized showers and thunderstorms. Environmental conditions are expected to be favorable. That's very significant, um, as we do a lot, a lot of times see quite significant disturbances, but not particularly favorable environmental conditions. We see here a not particularly potent disturbance, but we've got favorable um, conditions which may allow this storm to develop um, quite significantly and it could allow some gradual development over the next few days and the system can become a tropical depression while it moves west northwestwards at 10 to 15 miles an hour just terms of forecast to reach the portions of the lesser antilles late monday and then move near virgin islands and puerto rico on tuesday near hispaniola around the middle of this week interest in those areas should continue the monitor of this system as it could bring locally heavy rain and gusty winds to that area now you can see there the NHC have not really talked about much beyond the next maybe three days, really because of the amount of uncertainty around with this. Now, I would, in normal circumstances, show you the GFS run, which would be forecasting these, but because they're so localised, these storms, and they haven't got particularly great definition yet, they're not showing well, uh, showing up well on the models, um, as it's so difficult to forecast, especially in the disturbance phase, where it's not a real significant area of low pressure yet. Um, so forecasting this is going to be a nightmare, really, and, uh, until it starts to, starts to form a, a well-defined centre. And by that stage, it probably will be um, a tropical storm. So we'll have to really keep an eye on this. And it does look like it's going to be the more progressive disturbance. Now, we have disturbance 2, which is a 30% chance of 48 hours and 40% over 5 days, compared to the 50% over 5 days of the first disturbance. And I suspect that's because... It's sort of following in the wake of this first disturbance. And sometimes we see that where storms, where they follow directly in behind the track of um, another storm. It can be favourable sometimes to spin up um, these uh, storms, but also it can be unfavourable, where it means um, we get a cold swell uh, up, up. Uh, upwelling of water so where the top layer of the ocean because it's nice and hot fuels the storm but as it does it cools down and that means any storms fall coming over it come over cold water and that cold water rises to the top 
um, as the warm water is taken away by the first storm. So sometimes we do get that upwelling and that can um, reduce the strength of the storm. Um, and that's potentially why they've sh said 40% here. I can't be sure, but that's just one reason that, that, that it could be. So showers and thunderstorms associated with an area of low pressure located over the tropical Atlantic about midway between uh, Cabo Verde Islands and the Lesser Antilles have diminished this morning. Although environmental conditions appear to be only marginally conducive for development, the system still could become a tropical depression later this week while it moves towards the west, southwest or west at around 10 miles an hour. So you can see there it's a less significant disturbance. The activity within it is decreased, but it's got decently conducive to conditions. Um, and the fact that it give, they've given it 30 to 40% doesn't quite match up with the description. So we'll just have to keep an eye on this um, on, on the, uh, this disturbance. But I do suspect at least one of these will form into a tropical depression. And we'll have to just really see how they do move. But at this moment, it's looking like a classic sort of Caribbean into Florida sort of track. Um, so really have to keep an eye on that. Um, and that eventually, as I said earlier, in 10 to 14 days time, could travel up the East Coast and come to the jet stream and head towards the UK and start to impact our weather. If we do next have a look at the Eastern Pacific, you can see there is Tropical Storm Kevin, um, which is... Uh, it's got 60 mile an hour winds potentially going to upgrade to a hurricane over the next few days but it's heading out into the Pacific so it's not going to impact any land and then we've got this other disturbance, disturbance 1 it's got a very high chance of formation over the next few days but again it's moving out into the Pacific may impact parts of Mexico and its outer bands so we have to keep an eye on its track over the next week or so if it does head towards California or through, through Mexico area but at the moment they are moving out into the Atlantic, so I don't suspect they'll cause too much damage or uh, provide significant conditions um, to any populated areas. Again, we've got another small disturbance out in the Pacific, um, and it's really not doing much towards Hawaii, so I don't expect really to be any fuss over that. So if we do now have a look at the weather nerds, um, this is a very, um, uh, a very good site um, that shows us the latest sort of satellite data um mainly from north america um it is a north american site i would use it for the uk but unfortunately if you have a look at the regions it doesn't quite reach the uk on its satellites um unfortunately um it just comes towards spain and france so we can't have a look at sort of uk satellite data but it's good for forecasting sort of hurricanes and tropical storms you can see at the moment we've got this one elongated of low pressure um just here off some of the caribbean islands and then we've got the other area of low pressure further eastwards and northwards um and you can see it here on the satellite data it's not particularly organized at all but it is heading towards the caribbean and we just have to keep an eye on how these do start to spin up if we do have a look at the infrared, you can see we do have some decent convection taking place in at least the first system with some quite um, quite high cloud tops there. Um, and we could be seeing um, some significant development in the centre. We'll just have to see how this sort of central area of convection does take off over the next couple of days. And again, if it does start to come more significant, I'll be doing another update again. And you can see this other area of low pressure, much less, much less uh, significant, does have a small core of convection. But we'll just have to keep an eye, really, on um, what happens with that. As the description says, the conditions are marginally favourable. Um, so it, we'll just have to keep an eye on if it does develop. If we do, lastly, have a look at water vapour. Um... And you can see um, right here the water vapor within the storms heading up. And you can see it's pretty significant in this first area of low pressure, less so in the second area of low pressure. Um, so, again, all keeping an eye on how this does develop. We'll have a key, uh, you've got to keep an eye on the visible, the infrared, and the water vapor um, just to show you where the storm really is pepping up. Because if you did have a look just at the visible, you couldn't really see um, the major convection taking place within these storms the infrared gives us those cloud heights and it does mean we can see generally where the highest convection is and where these storms are starting to um, really pick up so we'll just have to keep an eye on how these do develop over the next few days 
If they do start to significantly develop, we will start to see it reflected on model output within the GFS more significantly. As again, the GFS is pretty low resolution in terms of the size of a, of a small disturbance like this. When it does form to a bigger storm, then it will start to show up better on the GFS run. And we'll maybe have a look at that if it does start to develop. So interesting starting to see some development over um, in the Atlantic. I did initially think this would be an above average hurricane season. It hasn't really been so far. We have seen above average sea surface temperatures, but nothing significant has really developed so far. So we just have to keep an eye on what's happening. It does mean, though, because we haven't seen significant development, not a lot of the energy in the sea surface temperatures has been, has been used up, really. The water is completely warm. There's no upwelling of cold water. So it does mean if a storm really does get going, it's, it's quite likely that it's going to be uh, going to continue st uh, with its strength as it heads towards any land. So just need to keep an eye out on these over, over the next sort of few days. And then the longer term potential for these, if they do develop significantly to affect the jet stream and impact parts of the UK weather. And we'll have to look at that if that does happen over the next few weeks. So anyway, thanks for watching. Make sure you check out my video later um, and I'll see you again um, in that video or another video soon.